preparation increases with expectation. The more you expect for Christ's return, the more you're going to prepare. Now I'll tell you, we've had a great Thanksgiving with our family. So proud to have my granddaughter Samantha with me, my son Dallas Jordan with me today. Amen in this service. But I'll tell you, the closer it got to Thanksgiving Day, the more we expected more people to come and arrive at our house, the more preparation that we had. Did anybody have any similar feeling this week? The more you, you, you be as people, you, you had to prepare, right? We had to clean the house, wash the sheets. My wife so blessedly made the orange rolls. Come on. Some of y'all don't even know what that is. What it is now is about five extra pounds around my waist. Hello. The preparation was made. And the turkey was, was, was smoked. The turkey was baked. The dressings were made. The cranberries were prepared. And finally the day came when Thanksgiving came. And so, so what I'm trying to say is that preparation increases with expectation. And I wonder, have you ever considered how you would prepare for work or school if you expected Jesus to be sitting there when you arrive? Come on. How would you have prepared for church this morning if you knew that God Almighty was going to show up when you got here? Come on. How would you spend your time getting ready in the morning if you knew that the Holy Spirit was just waiting to tell you something amazing as, as you were ready to listen? Come on. I believe that we're living in the last days. We've got to do something different. We've got to be completely prepared. And as we expect His return, it would affect our preparations for each and season and even every day. And actually, the truth is this, that he, Jesus, is at your work in school waiting for you when you arrive this week. Come on, somebody. He's always ready to meet you when you reach out to Him. Amen. When the Chinese were getting ready to host the 2008 Olympics, they had the vision and expectation to show the entire world that they had become a world power. So in 2001, the International Olympic Committee announced China would host the games and preparations began immediately. They, by 2007, they had built a new national stadium, a swimming center, a shooting range, a velodrome, a tennis center, a hockey stadium. And, and, and at their opening game, at the opening of the games, they had over 15,000 performers for the opening ceremonies. You know, of those performers, 2,200 had a small part in demonstrating the martial arts, and that group lived and prepared together in an, arty camp, in an army camp for three solid months. They practiced 16 hours a day. Many of the performers were even given diapers to wear during rehearsals so they didn't have to take breaks. How many know that's being serious? Come on, somebody. They had huge expectations of them. They made tremendous preparations and they delivered amazing results. And so the question today is this. How big is your expectation of Jesus during the, next, during the next four to five weeks? How big is your expectation of what Jesus is going to do in your life during this holiday season? Maybe you think, oh, it's going to be kind of a nice laid back holiday, you know, but let, maybe you ought to think like this. This could be the holiday that your family comes to Jesus. This could be the holiday that God does something amazing in your life. This could be the holiday when, when the Lord shows up around the Christmas dinner table and healing begins to take place among family members. This could be the holiday when God shows up on the scene. Come on somebody. Are you expecting Him to come? Are you preparing for Him to come? Because the the more you're expecting, the more you better start preparing. Come on, somebody. I, for one, am believing God for great things during this sermon series. I'm believing God for great things during the Christmas season. Amen. I don't believe that the church ought to just go into maintenance mode during Christmas. Oh, no, sir. It's the greatest time of the year. They're singing about our Savior at Walmart, at J.C. Penney. They're playing my song. Come on. Holy, ho, uh, they're, 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 oh, holy night, amen. They're singing all those Christmas songs. I'm not talking about Santa Claus songs. 
I'm not talking about happy the snowman. I can't even frost you the snowman. I know who Frosty is. I'm not talking about Rudolph. I'm talking about songs that glorify Jesus. Come on. Amen. It's an opportunity to witness everywhere. Tell me, what, do you know that song? Can I tell you about who they're singing about? His name is Jesus. Come on. You can talk about Jesus everywhere. Amen. Amen. I'm, we've got to have expectations that the Lord is going to show up. You see, he's on a rescue mission. That rescue mission began before the foundation of the earth. He knew mankind was going to sin. He said, I'm going to have to have a rescue mission. It's going to begin in Bethlehem in a little manger. How many of you ever see, seen the movie called Captain Phillips? Y'all need to watch a little more movie. That's a good movie. True story. Captain Phillips gets... It's a story of, of this guy who's, coming, who's the captain of this ship, and it gets attacked by Somali pirates. And somehow he gets the pirates to let his crew go free, and he winds up in the, in the little boat, and they're trying to escape to land, and they've got Captain Philip hostage, and they're going to, I don't know what, he's afraid for his life. I'm sure with these Somali pirates, they mean business. Come on. Then all of a sudden, what you see is this great big naval destroyer uh, coming, and it shines this giant light on them. And that, even that little boat's just dwarfed by this thing. And, I, and, and, you know, when I was watching, I said to myself, I said, boy, I'd never want to be on the wrong side of the United States Navy, man. <laughs> that, that USS Bain, Bainbridge, I think it's called Bainbridge, you know, that, that's an incredible, incredible a missile destroyer that the U.S. Navy has. And so what I'm trying to say is, is that I don't want to end up on the wrong side this Christmas. Come on. Hey, man, I want to end up on the right side. Hello? Because let me tell you, when, when God sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross, when He sent Jesus into the world, that one that came to our rescue's name was Emmanuel. Uh, he was God with us. He had all the power and authority to call down all the angels of heaven for His purposes and His desires. That ancient one humbled Himself to become fully man because we were held hostage by sin. And Christmas was the beginning of a rescue mission that was conceived and carried out on our behalf by none other than God himself. Come on. And so my friend, when you look at the Christmas uh, cards that you get in the mail and you're thinking about, you know, away in a manger and all that sentimental stuff, I want you to realize that Jesus, amen, he's not simply a little baby in a manger. Come on. He's the mighty deliverer. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the one that can set a drunkard free. Come on. He's the one that can cleanse and, and, and set people free by the power of Jesus Christ. I'm just here today to tell you that he's the greatest plant man that, that ever walked the planet today. He's God incarnate. Come on. Can we give him praise today in this house? He's on a rescue mission. And he invites us to join with him. And that's why I'm encouraging you to invite everybody that you can to our Christmas Eve service. You'd be surprised. People will come. They want something to do. It's at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Line them all up. Amen. Let's get Let's fill the house for Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're on, he's on a rescue mission. His name is Emmanuel. He's God with us. Amen. I don't know what you're expecting and preparing for this Christmas. But I'm not expecting things to fall apart. Come on. I'm not expecting to be defeated. I am waiting expectantly for God to come through for you and me. I'm waiting expectantly for Jesus to be revealed in our life. I'm waiting expectantly knowing that He's preparing us, uh, if, uh, us if, for heaven. Amen. I'm waiting expectantly for the plans that He has for you and for me and for this church. I'm waiting expectantly for His kingdom to advance. Come on. I'm waiting expectantly for the lost to be found and the blind to see. I'm waiting expectantly for his love to be made known to a hurting and dying world through you and through me and through his church. Come on. How many of you say, Pastor, I'm willing to help Jesus on his rescue mission. 
I'm willing to be a part of it. And I'm willing to prepare. And most of all, I'm willing to expect that God is going to be with us. Would you stand with me today? Thank you so much.